Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about how the process of transcription is different in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Make sure that you understand what the process of transcription does, why it's important, before you proceed with this video. Specifically, transcription is the intermediate step that connects DNA to protein. So it's how genes are expressed in a cell. Genetic information is stored in DNA. Uh, an mRNA copy of the DNA is made. That's the transcript that's made in transcription, which we'll be talking about today. And then that gets translated into protein. I do have a video on the central dogma of molecular biology that goes into more detail on that process. If you want to watch that first and then come back to this video. But now let's get started talking about transcription and how it differs in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Remember with prokaryotes, we're talking about mainly bacteria. Um, and with eukaryotes, we're talking about plants, animals, fungi, algae, protozoans, things like that. So let's get started. Prokaryotic mRNA, that's what we are referring to when I talk about the transcript in most cases. So prokaryotic mRNA may be monocystronic or polycystronic while eukaryotic mRNA is exclusively monocystronic. Now let's talk about what those words mean. Polycystronic is what we have happening right here. So polycystronic is where you've got one mRNA, one mRNA transcript, that's the black line here, and multiple polypeptides, <clears throat> multiple proteins, are made from that one transcript because there are multiple genes per transcript. So you can have multiple genes represented on a transcript and then multiple polypeptides coming from that. Polypeptides and proteins, we can use those words interchangeably. Monocystronic, on the other hand, is where you've just got one gene per transcript so that each transcript results in one protein. So again, Prokaryotes can do this or this. Eukaryotes are only monocystronic. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes also have different types and numbers of polymerase enzymes. Now here we're talking about RNA polymerases. Remember that DNA polymerases are enzymes that replicate DNA during DNA replication. So they copy the DNA to make more DNA. RNA polymerases use the DNA as a template to make RNA. And so RNA polymerase enzymes are the main enzymes of this transcription process. So prokaryotes and eukaryotes have different types and numbers of polymerases. Prokaryotes have one polymerase, RNA polymerase. It only works when it has a cofactor like um, uh, molecule that's called sigma. Different sigmas can make the one RNA polymerase transcribe different genes. On the other hand, eukaryotes have three different polymerases known as RNA polymerase 1, RNA polymerase 2, and RNA polymerase 3. And they also transcribe a different subset of genes. Um, specifically genes for mRNA, which go on to be uh, expressed as proteins, but then also genes for tRNAs, which carry amino acids to the ribosome in translation, and genes for rRNA, which is the RNA that helps make up those ribosomes. Um, all of these different types of RNA are being transcribed by slightly different polymerases in eukaryotes. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes also have different promoter elements. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this, but basically there are promoter elements usually that are upstream of a gene, meaning like before the gene starts every once in a while, downstream of the gene, meaning after it ends. But these promoter elements are just elements that are part of the nucleotide sequence and the regions surrounding the gene that are um, where the polymerase will bind or where um, like initiation factors will bind to get transcription up and started. And so prokaryotes and eukaryotes have different promoter elements. They use different sequences in different places um, to carry out that function.
And they also have different termination processes. So this is referring to the ending of transcription. So basically when you transcribe the mRNA and you get to the end, termination has to happen. In eukaryotes, there are a variety of termination factors that come in to make sure that the RNA polymerase lets go of the DNA and that the mRNA can then go off and be translated. Um, in prokaryotes, there's a, a protein called Rho, R-H-O, that often plays a role, although there are also Rho independent termination processes where Rho does not um, factor in. Um, but again, they've just got prokaryotes and eukaryotes have, have some differences in their termination procedures and in the different kinds of proteins that play a role in that. Eukaryotes also modify their mRNA transcripts in three major ways. So when the um, transcription process ends in eukaryotes, we then have what's known as pre-mRNA. And that's because for it to become mature mRNA, it goes through something called post-translate, or excuse me, post-transcriptional modifications. So modifications that happen once the transcription has ended. And so here are these three ways. One of them is the addition of a five prime cap. The five prime cap has to be put on that helps to target the uh, mRNA out of the nucleus, out through a nuclear pore and helps the ribosome basically find the mRNA so it can dock onto it to pr proceed with translation. There's also getting a three prime poly A tail. So this is when a whole bunch of adenines, that's the A, so multiple adenines, poly A means multiple adenines, multiple adenines are just tacked on to the end of the mRNA. And that's to protect the mRNA. Because once it exits the nucleus through a nuclear pore and goes out into the cytoplasm to be translated, there are proteins out in the cytoplasm that will actually degrade RNA. They'll chew it up and they eat it from the three prime end. And so since the three prime end has this poly A tail on the end of it, the enzymes can chew up that poly A tail without actually disrupting the nucleotides of the actual mRNA sequence that are coding for protein. So it's a protective mechanism. There's also something called splicing. And this is where there are certain sequences of the pre-mRNA transcript known as intervening sequences, um, intervening sequences or introns and these get spliced out, they get removed. And then what's left are these sequences that are going to be expressed, expressed sequences, we call these exons, um, where the X comes from express, and those get joined together. And as a side note, eukaryotes can also do something that's called alternative splicing, which is basically where, um, different exons can be spliced in or out so that you can have different polypeptides that are distinct structurally but related to each other because they have some of the same exons um, and they can come from the same gene just depending on which exons are kept and which ones are spliced out. Um, and so the mRNA transcript goes through these three processes before it then goes on to translation. On the other hand, prokaryotes, they don't do any of these three things. Instead, they couple transcription and translation. That just means that transcription and translation occur simultaneously. In other words, translation, which is making polypeptides from the mRNA uh, template, that can begin before transcription ends. And that's depicted here. We've got our DNA in green, our polymerase is right there. That's the RNA polymerase making the mRNA shown in black. We've got our ribosomes in blue. When there's multiple ribosomes in a line like that, it's actually referred to as a polyribosome. Remember, poly means many. Um, and each one of them is making polypeptides, and those are shown here in pink. And so what you see here is that translation of the mRNA has started before the RNA polymerase is even done making the mRNA. So that's coupling, and, and um, prokaryotes can do that, of course, because they don't have a nucleus. 
So with eukaryotes, transcription happens in the nucleus, you have these modifications happen, then the, the mature mRNA goes out into the cytoplasm where then translation begins. And prokaryotes, they don't have a nuclear membrane. And so the DNA and the ribosomes can be near each other, and so you can have these two processes be coupled together. If you're interested in learning more about how prokaryotes couple transcription and translation, I've got a separate video that goes into more detail on that. I also have a separate video that goes into a lot more detail on alternative splicing, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that one. Um, I also have a video on comparing the process of DNA replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So check that one out too if you're interested and thanks for watching Biology Professor.